So, I propose to you, dear viewers, a simple question. Do you need an airbrush to create a glow effects? Let's find out. So, I have a bit of an idea with this Volkite weapon for the Predator tank for the Horus Heresy game. And to get the glow effect, a lot of people tend to use an airbrush for this. So I'm just gonna experiment by using dry brushing techniques instead. So I'm gonna get some white scar and then a nice fluffy brush. And well, I thought it might be worth a go. It might turn out really well, or it might be a load of rubbish and I won't unload this. <laughs> so, I'll just have a little, little go. Wipe some of the excess off there. So, I'm going to want to just run along the top, not to really force it in to the gaps, more along the edge, and then just being quite sort of haphazard and just sort of going across onto the other areas of the weapon. I'm just kind of really working it in, so to the point where it probably doesn't feel like that there's any uh, any paint left on the brush, but if you keep working it, it does show up. I'm going to try that with this conversion beamer as well. I think it's a conversion beamer. No. Um, this is the iron weapon. Oh, I can't remember. And this will take a bit of time and a bit of patience. Obviously, with an airbrush, you can just go and then it's just done. That's not like I'm calling my cat. No, she's not there. Okay. Um, you can charge it through and yes, you wanted me. No. But anyway, and you just splash that on and then put a washer over the top and it's done, but yeah, I just thought if I can do it this way, it might work pretty well. So, next step. So next step, I'm just gonna grab some of this Beltan green shade. Nice chunky pot. And may as well use the same brush. Um, but I'm going to experiment. I'm going to use the Beltan on the Volkite and then for the Graviton Cannon, I'm going to water down some moot green to the same consistency as a, as a shade or a wash. Because um, I'm not too sure which one to go for. So I figured I've got two different weapons. Let's do two different techniques. So let's give it a go. I'm just going to remove little amounts of excess that are just around the edge and just try to blend it into the rest of the area, just so it's not as a, as a harsh uh, line. Just want to achieve that same lovely, silky smooth transition that you can get with airbrushes. But of course, I've got an airbrush, so we will find ways to persevere without one. So I've left it to dry, and during the time that, that was drying, I then went back over this one that just had the moot green wash, and I gave it a, another wash with the bell tan. And I found that the two synergize really nicely. I don't know how well you can see on here. Um, the two work together really, really nicely. See like the dark green at the very bottom. 
better for them than orbs. And it turned out quite nice. So, using both paints together, I'm going to just apply a bit of this moot green as a bit of like a dry brush. And just over the top of these sort of grills. But I'm just going to run it across just the edges leaving that middle section there of where the white is. I mean, you could just dry brush across the whole thing and then go over the middle with the white, but this just cuts out a step that we don't have to worry about. And then if you overspill just onto the, the rest of the weapon, that doesn't matter too much because we're gonna move on to that now. And just using the very edge of the brush, very lightly, just go, just run it along the edge there. Same on that side. And that will represent the, uh, the more intense brightness of the glow. So I'm quite pleased with the result. And then what I'm gonna do now is just pop it onto the miniature and see how it looks on there. So going back to the question of, do you need an airbrush to create glow effects? The answer is no. Well, I mean, yes, you'd want to do it quicker, but the option is there that you still can do it without using an airbrush by simply applying a lot of dry brushing techniques and a lot of glazes and washes over the top to create the same effect. So I hope that you have learned something new today and this was a bit of a spur of the moment video as I was painting up a friend's predator tank for his Sons of Horus army. And I thought, you know what, I'm, I'm going to make a little video as I'm going along just to show everyone at home how I do the, uh, sort of the glow power effects on weaponry. I also did a similar technique with the headlights. Again, just dry brushing white and then just applying quite a few layers of sort of reds and oranges just to achieve that similar sort of style and similar look. So if you found any use out of this video then I do applaud you to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't done already. This video has been quite fun to make, quite simple really. Um, so if you wanted to pick yourself up one of these Predator tanks for yourselves then you will find a link to Wayland Games in the description. And if you'd like to see some stills of this Predator Dank when it's finished, I just need to apply some decals onto it and a bit of weathering. And that'll be over on my Instagram page at Lynch Paints. And as well, if you wanted to help support me further, I do have a link for my coffee page down below as well. So thank you ever so much for watching, everybody. Stay safe, stay beautiful, and we'll see you next time.